So what is Grails anyway? Grails is part of this new trend toward complete stack frameworks. The idea being is that rather than pick some open source or whatever project for your view layer, like uh, Velocity Templates or Site Mesh or FreeMarker or any of those, and then have to pick something for your persistence layer, like Hibernate or TopLink or OpenJPA, et cetera, and then pick something else for your service layer, like the Spring Framework or Google Juice or some of the others. Instead, Grail says, look, we, we made all those decisions. We put everything together. It's already working. All you have to do is run some scripts, and as long as you follow our conventions, you don't have to do very much configuration at all to get a very nice application up and running very quickly. Now, if you don't want to follow the conventions, then you simply have a little bit more work setting things up to configure them the way you want them. But Rails is very flexible in how you can map to whatever you want to map to. We'll talk about that. We'll see examples of that as we go. So the complete stack goes all the way from the view through the middleware, the service layer, the DAO, the data access objects, persistence, and everything to the database and back through. Based on other projects that are quite mature, uh, the idea is that convention over configuration business, it's an open source project, you can just download and run it, uh, very easy to use, and one of the nice features about it, it's very easy to deploy as well. We'll just export a war file, drop it into Tomcat or any other J2E server or Java EE server, and it just runs right out of the box. So the version on Rails at the moment is version 1.3. I think it's 1.3.3 came out yesterday. I immediately downloaded and found a bug, but <laughs> I'm using 1.3.2 in today's presentation. How can a version 1 product be considered mature? Well. Grails is built on top of the Spring Framework primarily, especially the MVC portion of it for building the web application. For the object relational mapping, by default, it uses Hibernate, and Hibernate is quite mature. So is Spring, for that matter, the Hibernate object relational mapping layer. Other portions that, come in, that are built into Grails, like the view templates are done through a, a technology called SiteMesh. They build in various AJAX libraries like Prototype, and you can always um, add uh, plugins for Dojo, Scriptaculous, jQuery, whatever you happen to prefer. There's an immediate plugin for Quartz scheduling. There's a nice plugin for searchability with uh, Compass or Lucene. There's a lot of nice projects. So basically, anything you can do with Spring, you can either do immediately with Grails, or there's a plugin to add it in. Most things are right there. Some things are added later. Similarly, any database that you could map with Hibernate, you can use with Grails. And there's a nice custom ORM tool as well to make that easier. If it turns out we have time, I'll try to show an example of the custom ORM mapping as well. But let's uh, try to build something first. Now, of course, Grails is built on top of Groovy. And where does where does Groovy fit in? Well, I mentioned before that the vast majority of the Grails code base is, in fact, Java. The reason for that is that we're building on top of Spring and Hibernate and several other projects, and those are written in Java. There's no need to port those to any other language. It's quite comfortable using them as they are. And most of the industry these days is using Spring in one form or another, maybe not the MVC layer, but certainly the uh, core part of Spring with the dependency injection and the lifecycle management and everything. But it, so it's been built inside of Grails. Hibernate is also probably the most common object relational mapping tool, a tool to convert uh, object classes into database tables and back again. Grails is there. Groovy basically provides the, the glue, if you will, to connect all these pieces together. Plus, Groovy as a dynamic language is a great language for writing what they call domain-specific languages, DSLs. Uh, these are little languages with a few keywords and a few operations that allow you to do interesting things with a minimum of code. We're going to see an example of that with GORM, the Grails Object Relational Mapping uh, Framework. But Groovy can be used to make all sorts of little languages like this, and they can be very, very helpful in some cases. So we'll see how that ties in also. If you are not familiar with Groovy in general, Groovy is a programming language. It's a separate language. But it's interesting in that 
it's very similar to Java, and in fact, it compiles to Java bytecodes. So in other words, whatever you compile in Groovy can run on the JVM. And I can use Groovy code to contact Java classes and vice versa. I can use Java code to instantiate Groovy classes and invoke methods on them as well. As a matter of fact, almost every Groovy class actually uses some Java in it because they didn't reinvent the API. You still have the whole Java libraries. Groovy adds additional libraries as well, but it rests on the bedrock of Java. It also brings these modern language features, things that Java doesn't have yet, like optional typing or builders or closures. We'll, we'll talk about a little bit of that as we go. But the fact of the matter is, while you do need to know something about Groovy to be productive in Grails, you don't have to be an expert at it. And by knowing Java, you actually know a lot about Groovy, and you can add on as you go. You don't have to do everything right away. OK, how do we install Grails? Grails, in fact, is an open source project located at grails.org. There's the download link. You, it does assume that you have Java installed, a JVM installed on your machine. So you set the Java home variable so Grails can find it. You download Grails. It just comes as a zip file. Uh, there was a Windows installer. These days, I haven't bothered with it. Groovy has a decent Windows installer, but Grails Basically, you just download a zip file, you unzip it, and you set a Grails home variable to point to it, add the bin directory to your path, and you're ready to go. Most people, now you can use Grails from the command line. That happens a lot. But if you prefer to use an IDE, as most developers do, an integrated development environment, there are several whose Groovy and Grails support are, let's say, coming along. The support is not fantastic, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Now, Grails comes with the shell command that's a command line client and a console that is basically the, the same Groovy console just with all the Grails uh, domain classes added into it in the, in the class path. But if you do want to use an IDE, most people like Eclipse. That's still the, even if they're not wild about it, that's still the most common IDE in the industry. Eclipse has a Groovy plugin and it handles Grails, but it doesn't really know Grails. The Grails plugin is really over at Spring, and Spring makes available a product called Spring Source Tool Suite. And I'll show you that a little bit later. I'm going to use that to illustrate different aspects of a Grails project. It's a very nice system, and it has a Grails plugin that works with a Grails uh, project very easily. Now, a lot of the core team members use the IntelliJ IDEA IDE. That one has worked with Grooving Grails for a while, although the pace of innovation on that seems to have slowed down somewhat. But it's still around. Also, every version of NetBeans from 6.5 on uh, actually has a Grails project type built into it. I've used that fairly often. The version 6.9 just came out oh, a week ago or so. I'm going to use that today to show you some aspects. So in, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both NetBeans and Spring Source Tool Suite to illustrate aspects of Grails projects. That said, you can still do everything from the command prompt in any IDE that, well, even, you know, even Notepad if you wanted, but preferably any IDE that did your syntax highlighting and, and code completion for Groovy code, and Java as well. All right, how do you start a Grails application? Well, there's a command. Now, most of these commands, remember, we put the Grails in framework in the path. So in this case, you call the create app command on Grails, and you just give it a name, whatever your application name is going to be. And this is where Grails convention over configuration kicks in. It builds a standard directory structure with special directories for domain classes and controllers and views and everything. You CD down into that directory, the my app directory, whatever the name of your application is. And from there, you have a range of commands like create domain class, create controller, create view, generate all, all kinds of things that we're going to look at. And these commands will generate classes in the proper directories as well as test cases that you can use. Now, test cases are empty, but at least they're there and they're ready to go. And I hope to show you a little bit of that as well. Grails is one of those frameworks that prefers domain-driven development. In other words, in every Grails project, it's probably best to start off with your classes that are going to be your model. Thank you.